Coming up on Ag Week TV, what does the new president and administration mean for agriculture and who might be tapped as the next secretary of ag? We introduce you to a man who's helping veterans connect to opportunities in the ag industry. Pulse processing is hitting a new stride in northwest North Dakota. And we'll have market analysis of the latest USDA supply and demand report. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. Former Vice President Joe Biden has been unofficially declared president-elect of the United States. So what does that mean for agriculture? Biden didn't share many details about his vision for ag policy during his campaign. So Washington insiders say there are a lot of unknowns. But Biden could retighten regulations and tax policy and push for a Green Deal or climate change plan. He has said, though, he wants immigration reform. Still, Biden's position on ag issues may not be as important as his ability to work with Congress. Looking at the platform is interesting as far as what they might do administratively via regulation and what kind of proposal they may start out working with. But when you look at a House and a Senate that are so close in margins between Democrat and Republican, it's going to have to be a big give and take. As far as Biden's secretary of ag, Thatcher says there's a long list of leaders who would like the job, but one topped her list. You could also look at a Heidi Heidkamp from uh, North Dakota on the Democratic side, who's been quite involved in an initiative to get the Democrats more into office this year. Other candidates include Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, as well as former House Ag Committee Chairman Colin Peterson, who just lost his reelection bid. The loss of Peterson's leadership on the House Ag Committee may be felt in agriculture and the economy in the region for some time. Peterson guided several farm bills through rough waters and protected sugar policy in a Congress that didn't much care about an industry worth billions of dollars. American Crystal Sugar CEO Dave Berg says research from NDSU shows a nearly $5 billion yearly impact from the sugar industry in the Red River Valley. Sugar beets have been such a solid, rock-solid for the farmers, for the employees who work on the farms, and obviously for the people who work in the factories. There's, there's a, a, a multiplier that goes throughout the, throughout the industry. And I've heard this so many times in all the years I worked there and since. You don't have sugar beets, it's subsistence farming. Berg says the sugar program protects the industry from heavily subsidized foreign competition, and without it, Americans would likely be buying sugar from Brazil. The November WASDE report held some bullish surprises for corn and soybean balance sheets. USDA lowered corn yields 2.6 bushels from October and production 215 million bushels. That cut, combined with the 325 million bushel increase in exports, resulted in a drop in ending stocks by a record 465 million bushels to 1.7 billion bushels. Soybean yield was also lowered 1.2 bushels, which cut production to 4.17 billion bushels. That pulled ending stocks down by 100 million bushels from October to only 190 million bushels, a seven-year low. U.S. wheat carryout was lowered just 6 million bushels to 877 million bushels. Joining us with report and market analysis is Randy Martinson. Randy, one of the surprises USDA gave us this week in the report was lowering soybean ending stocks down to 190 million bushels. At the same time, they left exports unchanged. So do you see that ending stocks figure going down in future reports and how much? You know, I, I do, and it's kind of hard to believe that they didn't make an adjustment to uh, soybean exports. I mean, we've yes, already sold over 80% of the expectations. We're only 10 weeks into the marketing year. I think USDA, you know, at the pace that we're at, even just if we take China out of the equation for the rest of the year, just our normal buyers are going to take more than what we have left to sell. So I do think USDA will come in and make some adjustments. I'm thinking somewhere around that 50 million uh, maybe 75 million bushel higher estimate coming in for exports, which will lower our stocks down, down to that low 125 area. And that would infer that prices have to go quite a bit higher from here? They do. I mean, you look at that, I mean, we should be looking at prices in the teens. I mean, beans in the teens is what we'd be equating to at that time frame. You know, we've made some pretty big cuts already. I mean, it was surprising to see the production decrease as much as it has. We're back to, you know, what, seven-year uh, ago levels as far as our stocks are concerned. You know, you look back and, and it does show price has to go up if our stocks continue to tighten. USDA also made a historic cut in the corn ending stocks by 465 million bushels down to 1.7. 
yield it may come down though in subsequent reports you think and pull that number down even farther or not? You know I think yield needs to be adjusted a little bit more. I mean you, you look at the how this se harvest season has gone. I know we had less acres up here in the northern plains because of the prevent plant issue but there's no piles and there's no piles of corn in any state. Mm -hmm. So I do think we're going to see a little bit more of a yield reduction especially up here in the north. 145 for North Dakota is still too big but it, I mean we're not going to be significant. So USDA raised exports 325 million mm -hmm. bushels. Can we meet that projection? Boy, that's an aggressive pace. I mean, that's the highest we've ever been at for corn exports. It's going to be tough to make that. What are you thinking about corn prices, though, especially if soybeans keep going higher? Corn will have to go higher as well. I mean, they're, gonna, they're tied together, and they're going to have to compete for acres in the U.S. for 2021. So they are going to stay tied together. And we're actually seeing a lot more emphasis on 2021 markets right now. There's a lot of price movement out there. Before, they weren't moving as much. Now they're starting to get the attention as well. The wheat ending stocks, balance sheets didn't change much either U.S. or on a world perspective. So we're still looking at record global stocks, right? We are. I mean, the wheat market is, is a follower right now. I mean, we've got some production issues that have to play out. You know, Russia's seeing some dry conditions. The U.S. is seeing some dry conditions. But right now, the emphasis isn't on wheat. It's all on corn. It's all on soybeans. Thanks so much, Randy. Randy Martinson joining us here in studio. During the first five weeks of the Coronavirus Food Assistance, or CFAP2 program, more than $9.6 billion of payments have been made to farmers and ranchers. Iowa received more payments than any other state with $922 million. Nebraska is at $649 million, while a total of $639 million has gone out to Minnesota. South Dakota totals $440 million, with North Dakota at $342 million. Through CFAP2, USDA is making $14 billion of assistance available. FSA is taking applications through December 1st. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you about a program to help farmers who are also veterans. Insurance. It's not something you think about every day, but it is something you need. To get to your next destination, to preserve what you've built, to secure what you'll leave behind, to safeguard the things you value most. Enjoy peace of mind knowing you have protection from the unexpected, security all year round, and expertise you can trust. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just push your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's going to fit your needs. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. This week around the nation, we honored veterans. The U.S. Ag Census shows 11% of all farmers are also veterans. Jenny Schleck talked with a man working to help farmer vets in this week's Ag Week cover story. 
We do everything we can to make some tangible help for them along their way. Michael O'Gorman didn't serve in the military, but when he was ready to leave a long career in organic farming, he decided to do something to help veteran farmers, especially those who might be at loose ends when their service ends. Who am I and what's my sense of purpose and why am I here and what am I going to do? And is there something as, as meaningful and as compelling as that experience was for them. He started the Farmer Veteran Coalition in 2008 to connect veterans to opportunities in ag. One of their biggest projects is the Fellowship Fund, which provides grants for farmers. They ask for uh, different pieces of equipment or sometimes livestock, sometimes something really tangible that can help their farm uh, expand and go forward. Brad Hoff is in the National Guard and is a full-time physician assistant. I'm just a regular guy just trying to do my job. But Hoff says coming back home to his family farm is a stress reliever for him. It gives me the opportunity to kind of step away from medicine, um, to step away from the stressors that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. The Farmer Veteran Coalition has given out $3 million in grants so far and are developing other programs. Support the men and women that serve our country and, and support our um, great American tradition of agriculture. The U.S. Department of Agriculture also has several programs for veterans, including hiring and educational programs and entrepreneurship resources. In Robinson, North Dakota, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. You can find more information in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. The pandemic hasn't been negative for all food businesses. In fact, the largest flour mill in the United States is once again expanding. The North Dakota mill, which is the only state-owned mill in the country, announced it plans to expand capacity to 60,500 hundredweight by adding a 6,000 hundredweight Durham unit. The Industrial Commission of North Dakota approved the $23.5 million expansion. The project will begin shortly and is expected to be completed by the summer of 2021. Currently, the North Dakota mill cleans, processes, and mills more than 100,000 bushels of North Dakota wheat daily. Pulse crops like lentils, yellow peas, and chickpeas are growing in popularity for their taste and nutritional value. And as Michael Pates reports, a North Dakota company is well positioned to take advantage of the trend. How do we make foods that we eat every day more nutritious? while they, they still taste good. Canadian-based AGT has a plant in Minot, North Dakota that seems to be in exactly the right place for the right time. The company started in 2003 and really vision of adding value to in the producer's backyard. Eric Bartsch is AGT's head of global food ingredients. At first, 70 to 80 percent of AGT's production at Minot was for pet food. But as more consumers wanted high protein and grain-free products, their food market has grown. So the vision was, how can we add that value here with the latest technology uh, to make a high quality consistent product that can be distributed globally? The company started in Canada and now has 45 facilities around the world including processing facilities in Minot and Williston and U.S. offices in Bismarck. They make a variety of products including pulse-based proteins, texturized protein and a veggie crumb which is a bread crumb replacement. They process up to 140,000 metric tons of pulse crops a year, and the company has become a large player in the nation's pulse ingredients market, and worldwide generates more than a billion dollars in annual sales. Overnight, really become one of the dominant players when it comes to pulses and value-added pulses, and that's really what we've been doing since the very, very, very beginning. So this company offers pulse growers new access to international markets as well as the new frontier of nutritional markets here in North America. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates in Bismarck, North Dakota. AGT's pulse crops come primarily from North Dakota, Montana, and South Dakota. Up next, many farmers' markets are closed for this season, but we'll take you to one that's open year-round. And later, an important voice for ag is retiring. You've worked your entire life for this. Through the ups and downs, you've stood strong, building a legacy to be proud of. With all good things in this world, there are still risks. It's a part of life. You need protection you can count on. We're not just here to insure your equipment, your vehicles, or your home. We're here to protect everything you've built. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Challenges, we all face them at some time, but it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? 
If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Mice are a real problem and get into everything. They leave a scent trail, bringing more mice to the party. Poisons and traps just lure mice in, leaving you with the mess and costly damage. Introducing Mouse Mix, the world's safest and most effective deterrent. The pleasant scent interferes with the mouse's sense of smell. Simply put, they can't stand it. Mouse Mix works six months for complete winter storage of campers, cabins, boats, cars, and farm equipment. Mouse Mix, you put it out and the mice leave. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. Our weather has been a bit of a roller coaster this last week, but it looks like milder conditions will return. Here's John with our Agri Weather Outlook. General weather outlook for the middle part of the country over the next couple of weeks. Kind of a significant time of year, and we're looking a look back really at the amount of fall moisture. What is the condition of the soil after kind of an up and down summer uh, weather-wise? Uh, looking forward, I don't see any Arctic air as we go through the last part of November, and we'll take a look and see if there's a weather pattern that might generate some stormy conditions uh, with the holiday season coming up. Let's go back to spring, all right? As the snow is melting and and uh, the nation was emerging from winter. We were in pretty good shape after a couple of uh, wet years in uh, the upper Midwest in particular. Dry weather actually began to move in by the time we got to the 1st of June. And some dry soils focused really on the western Dakotas and northeast Minnesota through June. As we went through July, we started seeing some dry weather in western Iowa. And the Rocky Mountain Pacific Northwest drought really began to take hold. The drought in Iowa did worsen, spread across some parts of the northern Corn Belt. Things in uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota kind of remain status quo, not terribly dry. We did get a little bit drier parts of northwest North Dakota in the fall, and uh, western Iowa still remains quite dry. Some of the northern Corn Belt a little bit dry, but you can see the focus of dry air across the country. So as we look into the northern plains, Things are a little dry in spots going into winter, and it'll likely come out of spring that way. That's the way that usually works. No real widespread drought problems in the Corn Belt, but a few patches of somewhat dry soils. It's really the Rockies, the Pacific Northwest, that are really too dry right now. The pattern this week, fairly mild. The jet stream not going up and bringing down any really frigid air. In fact, this week looks relatively mild all throughout the week. By midweek, I expect uh, uh, at least a narrow region a pretty warm air uh, getting up into the 70s spreading up into the central plains most of the eastern u.s will be fairly cool the only really cold weather in u.s will be in the higher elevations of the rockies for this week that frigid weather that sub-zero air lurking up there in southern canada but as we go through thanksgiving week it's still looking relatively mild over most of the country the dark blue that's where it's below 32 and most of the country is just not that cold precipitation wise looking for storms now this week fairly dry through the middle of the country there will be some snow in the rockies some rain in the pacific northwest otherwise most of the nation relatively storm free and as we look at now thanksgiving week november 22nd through the 28th typically rainy in the northwest fairly dry throughout the great plains and the southeast it looks like for the time being the rest of november will be largely big storm free if we get any bad travel conditions it'll be from little systems which we'll have to watch for at the time 
Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less burning and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Keep your equipment in the field when you need it most with parts from Titan Machinery. We carry a full line of high-quality Case IH parts designed for optimal performance and durability. We also carry alternative parts options at lower price points with rugged designs for a great mix of affordability and performance to fit a wide variety of makes and models. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today or shop online at www.titanmachinery.com. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH parts leader. North Star Ag has a new location and a great lineup of equipment to help you work smarter this harvest season. Make the most of your time in the field this fall with the help of a Thunder Creek service trailer. We also carry innovative J&M grain carts as well as H&S beet carts to get your crop out of the field efficiently. North Star Ag is a Meridian Hopper bin dealer too. Visit our website, give us a call, or check out the new location at the Tower City exit right off I-94. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. The season for outdoor farmers markets in the Midwest might be over, but it's not the end of the line for one market. The Rochester, Minnesota farmers market has moved indoors where the weather is always perfect and expanded its online sales. Noah Fish has more. Farming is a year-round operation, so people need to be fed. While some farmers markets might close for the season when the air turns cold, the market in Rochester just moves inside to buildings at Grand Park. Kathy Menning, who operates Menning Meats with her family, says business is still good for them throughout the winter. The most obvious difference is the weather. It's just that we're sheltered from the weather, but we still have a lot of the same awesome customers that are coming you know, all year round. Despite the weather, we can still be here and offer helpful foods. The Rochester market features only products raised within 50 miles of the city, and many items can be purchased online. That's especially important this year with the pandemic. We've got a lot of customers. Some of them do have health conditions. Some of them, you know, they've just got a lot of kids or they've got a weird job schedule or their mobility isn't great or there's a thousand reasons. Vendors' products are listed in a directory on the Rochester Farmers Market website. R. Helger says it's working so well, they'll probably keep doing it long after the pandemic is over. In Rochester, Minnesota, this is No Fish for Ag Week. The farmer's market is offering free delivery through 2020 thanks to a grant from the city of Rochester. A major voice in ag communications is retiring. Becky Koch started in marketing at NDSU in 1991 and has been the director of ag communications since 2004. Through her role, Koch helped faculty, staff, and extension agents get their research and information out to the public. She says she considers her work in disaster communication some of her most important and rewarding, especially after major events like floods. She says changes in technology and social media have been an important part of her job. And Koch says she loves that she got to help them educate the public about the important work going on at NDSU. It's been really rewarding for me working in ag communication to work with all the faculty and staff to help tell their stories, to get that educational information out to the people of the state, shoot even the nation and the world, to help them improve their lives. Koch and her husband plan to retire in Arizona. 
Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you how to enter our holiday photo contest capturing the beauty of ag. Mice are a real problem and get into everything. They leave a scent trail, bringing more mice to the party. Poisons and traps just lure mice in, leaving you with the mess and costly damage. Introducing Mouse Mix, the world's safest and most effective deterrent. The pleasant scent interferes with the mouse's sense of smell. Simply put, they can't stand it. Mouse Mix works six months for complete winter storage of campers, cabins, boats, cars, and farm equipment. Mouse Mix, you put it out and the mice leave. If you have a basement waterproofing or structural emergency, Safe Basements North is here to help. Our team of basement repair professionals will find the cause of the problem and work with you to develop a permanent solution. Safe Basements North is following CDC recommendations and is here to help keep your home and family safe. For a free consultation, go to safebasementsnorth.com and take advantage of our 12-month no interest, no payments offer. I'm Jesse Treble and peace of mind is a safe basement. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Egg Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. If you'd like to take pictures of the beauty of nature and agriculture, we invite you to take part in our Ag Week Holiday Photo Contest. The contest runs until December 7th. Then voting will be done on Facebook and Instagram from December 11th through the 18th. The picture must be submitted by the person who shot it with one entry per person. You can see the submission information on your screen. All the photos will be featured online on December 28th and the winners will be announced on Ag Week TV. There will be prizes for the top three, so send in your favorite nature photo. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Have yourself a great and safe week.